Hey guys, I bring you another forgotten hidden gem of a classic, none other than this guy, which is the Mercury Mountaineer. And this is the first generation of Mercury Mountaineer, which is actually based on the second generation Ford Explorer. But uh, Brandon, why is the engine running? I could hear it running. Well, the engine is running because we are here at a dealer auto auction, and this has been here for about a month because I think the sellers are maybe a little little too ambitious with their pricing. And it's not because it's a bad vehicle, it's just the battery is dead. So we jumped it and I don't want to uh, have to jump it again. It has standard V8 power and available all wheel drive. The 1997 Mercury Mountaineer. The second generation Mountaineer it's kind of caught up in a bad reputation because it was part of that Firestone recall where everybody called the Ford Explorer the Exploder, right? <laughs> That's not a good term, yeah. Yeah, it's not really a good term, and this was caught up in that as well, just like that second generation Explorer, and it got kind of a bad reputation because of that, even though the vast majority of customers never experienced that issue whatsoever. It was just a small, portion of customers that actually experience it. But this isn't just any Mercury Mountaineer. This has got something extra spicy hiding underneath, and that is the five liter V8. Hey folks, today's video is brought to you by salvagereseller.com. This website allows you to bid live on online salvage auto auctions without a dealer's license. You can register for free or use the 20% off coupon in the description below. Go find your salvage car gem now. So you could get these with the typical six cylinder engine that came in every Explorer and every Mercury Mountaineer, but you had the rare option of being able to get this with the five liter V8. And the nice thing is, is this was a push rod V8. And you may think, oh, 5 .0, is that the same one that was in the Mustang? And well, kind of. So this had the block and the camshaft from an F-150, but it had the cylinder head and the intake manifold from the Mustang 5.0, which meant that this put out 210 horsepower and 275 pound-feet of torque, which means that this, if you got the Explorer with the rear wheel drive, this could do zero to 60 in about eight seconds, which was roughly two and a half seconds faster than the six cylinder. So even though eight seconds may not sound like a screaming performance machine, think about it in relation to the other explorers. And this was significant, uh, this was a significant performance improvement over that one. And this engine bay is immaculate, my friend. I it don't know if somebody really nice. washed it or something, but this is incredible. Yes. And the other thing I should say, now since this is the Mercury Mountaineer, this came with all-wheel drive. And yeah, not four-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, because it was all the time all-wheel drive. So the Mountaineer was a little bit slower than that rear-wheel drive Explorer. These did zero to 60 in about 9.3 seconds, which again was still faster than the V6 version of the Ford Explorer and the V6 version of the Mercury Mountaineer for that example. But not only that, I think that this design has really held up over time. These are just a classic, you know, it, it's not like an overly styled SUV. It's just got clean, simple lines. I think it's quite pretty. And the interior is in great shape, my friend. And I think people forget the spaciousness of this rear cargo area is tremendous. Yeah, because it doesn't have a third row, you have a ton of storage back here, making this a very, very useful SUV to have. Wow. Yeah, I even like, I mean, it's even got, this one's even got the original, or it looks like the original carpets in the back. And then you got, what's interesting is you get a door lock back here. So even though there's no third row, you can still lock the doors from back here. Yeah, and I think it was done prob probably, you know, if you're kind of going out camping and if you want to lock it, you know, you just changed your clothes or something like that. Exactly. <clears throat> oh, is, is it locked? Yeah, I think it's locked. Here, let's, let's pop close it. Close it up. But, so it has a couple of imperfections here, right? And yeah. it's a 2001, correct? Yeah, so this is a got a little over 100,000 miles on it. So we're not talking a showroom new condition. We're not talking a pristine example, but you can see, I mean, that leather is still really nice. 
the interior is in fantastic condition and i just i love these old explorers i actually personally own a first gen explorer and i have loved every minute of it i mean just look at these back seats these these are not particularly large cars but i have a ton of leg room i'm only about five foot nine but i also have a ton of headspace and then you do get your own personal cup holders down here and it looks like you can control the radio from up front as well as how much air is blowing out from the vents very cool it's like really modern type features in the older vehicle yeah i mean this being a 2001 it was really designed in the early 90s right so it's it's a pretty old design but you do get some nice features in here and you can see up here in front you do have your uh you know your radio controls on the steering wheel you even have temperature and fan controls on Whoa. the steering wheel which i love about these early fords cruise control yep you do have cruise control and you've got i, I actually really like these older radios with the big chunky buttons it's very hard to miss you got a very simple climate control and then you do have a little onboard computer where you can <laughs> you know reset your oil change you can check your econ your range different things like that so pretty modern features for this old truck that's pretty sweet you've got like your um, temperature it's uh, ambient temperature and compass yeah yeah you got a lot of onboard things and you'll see that there is no four-wheel drive selector in this whatsoever and that is simply because it is an all-time all-wheel drive but Andre, what do you think we take this out for a spin and see how fast it is on our little test track over here with the 5.0? Let's do this. Now, the other thing I like about these is they are surprisingly comfortable. This is the era back when, you know, you didn't have a ton of adjustments in the seats, but in turn, they gave you a pretty good amount of cushion. So it was a pretty soft, squishy, comfortable seat and it was a pretty soft, comfortable ride because this was generally meant for someone a little bit older demographic, but let's see how this 5.0 does all these years later. And well, it sounds good, but it's not, it's not a screaming fast car. I mean, 210 horsepower in an SUV with all wheel drive. You, you're not talking Mustang performance, but again, think about it in relation to the vehicles that were out at that time you're thinking like the jeep grand cherokee and you know the chevy blazer the oldsmobile bravada all those kinds of vehicles this was kind of wiping the floor with all of them um it was it was just really cool that you could get the five liter in the explorer and in the mountaineer which so few people remember that that cool of an engine even came in such a boring mundane suv yeah, and it has a lot of luxury options, my friend. I can see, you know, the garage door opener. I'm still kind of tickled by this computer down here. I mean, it's really kind of entertaining. Um, it, re it wants new oil. Yeah, it, it really does. <laughs> well, I'm guessing this is one of those things where I could probably just hold this but and let's, reset let's it. not do that. But we'll let the new, new owner, whoever ends up buying this, do that. This even has parking sensors, Andre. Holy. I don't know. Yeah, you can turn it off right there. So... I don't know if, how well that works, but you do actually have, I think it's rear parking sensors in this thing. Um, yeah, I just, I love these old Explorers. If, uh, if the owner wasn't wanting so much money for this one, it might be, a, might be a buyer on it. Now, before we wrap up this video, how much do you think, what's the market on these? You said the owner may, may be a little bit optimistic, but. So the owner is, I think they, now here's the thing. It's ran through the auction block maybe three or four weeks in a row. And not many dealers have been super interested because in reality, just an old Explorer like this isn't gonna get a lot of traction on their lot, right? Because not a lot of people know that these are that cool. Or I'm sorry, an old Mountaineer. But I've seen it bid up to like 2000 to $3,000, okay. which I think is a fair number for this vehicle. But my guess is, I'm just speculating here, that they want closer to like $5,000, which in a private, market sort of sense you know five to six thousand dollars is reasonable but at a wholesale auction you're probably not going to get quite that much but out on the used market if you were to buy this i think you could expect to get one for like five thousand dollars but after this video it will elevate 
all mountaineers, <laughs> That's right? That's right. <laughs> and the market, will, the market will shift and hopefully they'll sell. I mean, that, that's what some people say, right? I don't know I don't know that I have that much sway, although that's really flattering, Andre. <laughs> if I had that much sway, I'd be I'd be a pretty happy camper. You'd be rolling in it. Yes. <laughs> I think for a five to six thousand dollar vehicle, you can have a car that's rolling down the road that's kind of a hidden thing, you know? It just looks like every other mountaineer or explorer on the road but it's hiding that little extra spiciness underneath that only you, the driver, get to know about and enjoy. And in turn, I think it's a really good purchase at that price point. But I wanna know what you guys think in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. You could really use your help growing this channel. Thank you so much for Andre helping out filming today. This has been Brendan. Thanks so much for watching.